All right, here we go. I have not seen a video shrink rip thingy for this particular game from Hexasim, so I thought we might just have a quick look at it. I know some folks are interested in understanding what's in the package because there's been a, you know, a mild level of interest kind of bubbling up in uh, on BGG and on Facebook and on uh, a couple of other different places about, oh, what is Victory Roads and what's it all about and is it any good and should we get it? And I can't tell you how it's gonna play because I haven't played it yet. But I can tell you or show you what it looks like. Uh, first up <clears throat> comes Unshrinkwrapped, and uh, both uh, that and Fallen Eagles have come the same way, so don't expect shrink wrap. Uh, box, sturdy, beautiful uh, artwork on it, very patriotic uh, Soviet era artwork. Little blurb on the back, rockets, Hitler thinking about things. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, right? You can probably get a feel for the artwork right there, and there's the map, and that's it. That's the shrink wrap. Rip. But you actually want to see inside. Okay, well, we can do that too. Uh, oh, you even have little tanks on the back here. So very cool. Uh, three die cut counter sheets, one map, one full color rule book, play eight, a lot of them, by the way. Two dice. I only saw one in here, actually, but that's okay, because I don't give a shit. I have dice. Uh, and a unit uh, divisional level, core level for the Soviets, 25 kilometer hexes, a turn 10 to 15 days. Okay, let's have a look. So, boom. Now, I had a, already had a look at the game, so I'm just going to kind of rip you through it pretty quickly. From Bagration to the Fall of Berlin, 44 to 45. Not many games on this topic, and certainly not many recent games on this topic. I'd be curious to see how much of the uh, new research that's come out of the Soviet Union or Russia to that has been has been applied to this. I don't know anything about that at all, in fact. But uh, we'll be interested to see uh, if uh, updated OBs have been applied. Nice index, 24 pages of rules, including the scenarios and advanced rules, I believe, <clears throat> and a detailed sequence of play. Uh, based on the Liberty Roads game uh, system and also very clearly uh, laid out and formatted rules, I like the two column format, full color, a little bit of gloss on the paper you're probably not going to be writing on this set of rules, so you're probably going to want to make a copy if you're one of those guys. Uh, so, as you can see, very comprehensive set of rules and clearly uh, laid out. Uh, German player only has highlights on them. Designer notes are in red and exceptions are in red. It really does a great job. Examples are in boxes, blah de blah de blah You're now ready to play the introductory scenario. We can do a little Budapest scenario. And then we have to get into the advanced rules before you really play the campaign game, of course. So, there you go. There's all that good stuff. <clears throat> Still dealing with my bronchitis, cold, esophageal bullshit thing, so sorry <clears throat> about the croaky voice. Let's see. Counters. Look at the... Uh, artwork on these guys. Now, you might say it's a little bitty. And arguably it is. But I'm imagining when I see these pieces all on the board, kind of laid out, that this is going to look pretty freaking spectacular. Uh, so the unit insignias, uh, divisional insignias for every division is here, including some of the uh, Volks Grenadier formations down here. This is, it look, you know, it looks really busy and very crowded, but you can note that the, the digits are big, blocky, and bold, and easy to read. You've got the unit formations, on, uh, designations on the side, and then whether they're infantry, uh, armor, or whatever the case may be, very, you know, the type of formation, and then you've got the uh, the, the insignias and on the back um, it probably denotes uh, a reduction or a disruption or whatever the case may be I really don't know because I haven't uh, spent a lot of time uh, in the rules and then over here you've got the pan various panzer units as well if you can see those very clearly but there you go panzer formations all right and you get to the little, the little SS fans, you can see those there. 
interestingly here they've focused on having a larger uh, tank icon than the formation insignia for whatever reason more access units okay <coughs> soviets one full sheet remember these are all core level guard units with the big guard symbol on them and the armored uh, formations are here as well you can see the little silhouettes i, I don't know how i feel about silhouettes on uh, for armor on uh, that scale of formation and I know there's two, two schools of thought on that only there is only one die in here isn't it? Is that right there is okay well, whatever okay <clears throat> let's have a look at the, the quick look at the charts very uh, nice uh, card stock and I have no idea what this is what is this this is the turn sequence we're following through here and this looks like rolls for weather and lots of uh, images used to represent information versus words so this is obviously this cloudy right so no flight right uh, storms here so I think uh, I, I kind of like that format rather than having a bunch of text uh, visually it's uh, a little busy but it does it does uh, it does lend itself to uh, instantly knowing what's going on once you know what the icons mean. Set up charts for the campaign. More set up charts for the campaign. Soviet setups. <clears throat> I, don't, I haven't checked the focus on this. I'm actually, sorry guys, I'm actually on the, uh, to the side of the camera. So there's that again, in case you're curious about it. You can pause the video and look at it. Another campaign set up. Got the Pagration. Uh, battle. So really from June uh, 44 all the way through the fall of Berlin, you'll be able to experience what went on. A little introductory scenario. Reinforcement charts. Campaign game. General information for that. And then two sets of charts for each... Oh, sorry. A set of charts for each player. And specifics for the German support chits. What do they do? And what do the Soviet support chits do? And then on the inside... That continues, uh, Stavaka, sequence of play for both sides there. No, that's not sequence of play. We'll, we'll look at that at some other point and get into the details. Here it is, same, same, same sort of here. So special, special uh, uh, aspect of the game for each side uh, represented there as well. So makes it easy for you not to forget although there's not a terrain chart on the back of <clears throat> the soviet one but otherwise you're fine and there is a separate uh, terrain chart maps let's have a look at those i'm not going to lay them all out and join them up i will share with you that it has the uh native format format for you know things are in acrylic and all that sort of good stuff so i just hold that up there for you there's the other side of the Southern portion of the map. So some charts on the bottom there. Very nice. Typical, typical, uh, and this is a, I would say, a medium to heavyweight paper. Oh, now, this is interesting. They've got the weather chart on the map here again. Let me just open this out. <coughs> So that, seemed, that seems like a, a little bit of a waste to have that there, but there it is nevertheless. And here we're looking at the, the northern section of the map with the most uh, Smolensk, Smolensk being over here. <coughs> and this rolls all the way across to Stettin and Frankfurt. And then there's an extension map that I'll show you in just a second. So there are, in fact, three maps. There's Warsaw down here. <coughs> Lovely artwork. Everything looks very pretty on the map, so you get to give you a little bit of a close-up there. Our towns are just kind of uh, grey blobs. Uh, they're not anything fancy. And then we have the final little map segment here that links Berlin to the rest of the map. 
the main map and the Ost wall, etc. So lovely production quality of everything, I would say in general. I uh, can't speak to playability and all the rest of it, all mechanics really, but that gives you a quick look and a feel for what the game will be like. I'm sure there'll be lots of discussion about the you know, the counters and, and uh, the artwork on them. I'd say these are, generally speaking, they're well punched, everything's pretty well centered and offset correctly. Uh, the, the counters feel uh, almost as thick as GMT counters and you can see the size there as well they're you know on the smaller side of things but it's a large game so we don't expect to have large counters and a very nice production I'm not going to do a shrink rip for Waterloo 1815 on Fallen Eagles I think uh, it's already been done so we'll leave it at that very, very much looking forward to getting to this in our chronological playthrough of World War II. I think that'll be a lot of fun. That'll give me some time. I'll be able to do this and uh, Liberty Roads. And we'll see how that uh, helps us. That will actually be our wrap-up for uh, World War II. Uh, assuming that we can get through Empire of the Suns and a few other things. All right. All the best.